another colon, another nice normal wrinkled colon mucosa, and another polypoid structure delineated here protruding above that mucosa. Let's cut it that way, put it under the microscope, and see what it is. Well, we could see it's a polyp, and you can see that's why it's rising above this mucosa, is because it has this stalk of connective tissue that's continuous with the connective tissue of the submucosa. Notice, right away, these glands appear somewhat darker, and I think by now you can probably clearly see this is a uh, adenomatous polyp or tubular adenoma, which are generally larger and certainly darker because the uh, glands of a hyperplastic polyp might look a lot like the glands of a normal mucosa, perhaps have a lot of mucin, but these glands here don't have much mucin. They're dark. Uh, the nuclei aren't oriented that much towards the base. Uh, you could see that a lot of them decide they want to uh, undergo mitosis in an increased fashion. And true, you could see some mucus glands here, but in general, these are the classical cells of an adenomatous polyp. Uh, a long time ago, uh, some of us brilliant pathologists used to look very hard for this type of atypia with an adenomatous polyp until somebody said, hey, stupid, all adenomatous polyps are atypical because they can all possibly turn into cancer. So why waste your time looking for atypia? Because eventually, you know, they will all be atypical or perhaps many be cancer. So now I don't think many people will uh, make the comment about atypia within a polyp. If, there, if some of these glands infiltrate into the stalk, they may make a comment that cancer has occurred. But atypia within, within an adenomatous polyp is like uh, water within the ocean. It's just always there anyway. So I just wanted to review with you once again a classic adenomatous polyp, normal mucosa, stalk, proliferated epithelium, which is always atypical. Thank you very much.